that's very clear. Certainly appreciate those of you in attendance tonight for breaking through all of the previous speakers prior to day. <laughs> so I'll be as brief as I can, but anyone who knows me knows that you probably don't need a clock to keep up with what I have to say. So first of all, only a thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm not be here. I'm very thankful tonight for the people who have come to support me. I want to thank my girlfriend of 15 years who's been with me through thick and thin, through all the things that I've been through. In 2011, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. But God saw fit for me to still be above the ground and not below. Amen. To be seen and not be. I want to thank her for her support. I thank my de deceased mother, Stella Wright, who's probably been watching down on me this evening. I thank all the deacons who drove me to church every Sunday morning. As a little child, my mom always saw fit that we were in church on Sunday morning. I thank my pastor, Billy Joe Watts, who could not be here tonight. We had a homecoming reunion in St. Paul, Minnesota, but I know he's here in spirit. I'd be remiss if I didn't think a good friend of mine who got me involved in radio, Joe Riddle, who now it works for KYFM Radio 100.1 in Bartlesville, where I do a Saturday, a Friday morning pigskin pick, something I started at KRMG some 25 years ago. I want to thank the Tulsa Public School Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, especially Mike Mims and Athletic Director Gil Clyde. This honor is very humbling for me. Uh, I don't take it lightly. I want to uh, recognize my two children tonight, uh, Blair, who came all the way from San Diego, California. My hey! daughter, Ron Danielle Jefferson, the mother of my two precious grandchildren, drove up from Dallas, brought my son. And my Dakota High School principal, Ms. Jennifer Campbell, she's not only my principal, but she's probably the best instructional leader I've ever had. And I've been in this profession over 43 years. So thank you, Jennifer, for your attendance. <laughs> and your I'm also blessed to have in attendance the president of the OEA, Ms. Alicia Priest, one of my good friends, and the OEA executive director, Mr. Jim Key. Most of you may know that we had a very serious walkout in 2018. I was very involved in that walkout. I walk out about lots of money that not only certified personnel, but also to ESPs. We continue to work hard, and I'm a proud member of the OEA Board of Directors, having served, now serving in my fifth term. I thank you to the OEA. <laughs> also, I want to thank my answer to the night, and that's my dog, Roxy Jojo. <laughs> Roxy Jojo was almost killed about a month ago by a pit bull. I was taking her out for a walk on the roof story. Friday morning, thinking nothing would happen. True story. Next thing I know, the bull comes out in front of Roxy Jojo. Roxy Jojo is a small, <laughs> miniature dog. She's a Maltese, but she thinks she's a pit bull. Right. <laughs> she barked, and it was on. The pit bull grabbed her by the neck. I thought, Lord, 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 please do not allow my dog to die right in front of me. He saw fit to not have that happen because long came the little truck. That. And the guy said, like, sir, I'll get that guy. Said, that dog trying to kill your dog, didn't you? <laughs> Would you please blow that horn? Blow that horn! He blew that horn, and that scared the dog away. So, Roxy's doing fine after being in the bed. Full recovery. <laughs> the dog's name is Roxy Jojo. Roxy Jojo. I'm so honored tonight. I have this prestige of being the voice of the Looking Watch Hornets. For more than 50 years, I have never missed a game. Woo! I've been blessed. Woo! There's something that I really treasure. I got started uh, going to book to watch the ball games, living in the neighborhood, on Friday nights not having a whole lot of things to do. My mom was a single parent. My mom uh, only had a third grade education, but she's always saw fit for us to do things that involved doing things in the community. I was slipping into the old Booker T. Watson Stadium, which is now located just uh, uh, east of Carver Junior High. 
And I found myself captivated by all the attendance and the crowd and the roaring and the fantastic athletes that that school had. And I thought, you know what? I'd like to be a part of that someday. I started to listen to Howard Cosell and his interviews with Muhammad Ali. And you know what? I said, I think I can do that. So lo and behold, I went up one night to Booker T. watch a football game and Dale Hogg, who used to work for KOTV Channel 6, was doing the announcing. And he said something to me. He said, Train, I think I'll be ready to leave here and move to Dallas. I said, hey, you got anybody in mind? He said, no, were you interested? I said, yeah, I don't think you're <laughs> So 53 years plus later, I've still been the voice of the Booker T. Washington Hornets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've still been working with a lot of great coaches, tend to be, tend to be exact, Ed Lacey, Great man. I heard his name mentioned several times tonight. Robert Mays, Urban Brown, Larry McGee, Ted Alexander, Leotis Robinson, Antoine Jimerson, Darrell Hall, Marvin Dantzler, and the late uh, Gary Cale. Just great individuals that I've had an opportunity to work with and had some great relationships. In addition to that, wow, the athletes that have come out of that school I feel humble just to be in company with these guys. Granville Liggins, 1964. Eddie McWhorter, Melvin Gilliam, 1985. Melvin Gilliam had a play in a ball game, I think it was 1983. The crowd was roaring and getting ready to score. Somebody threw the ball, and Gilliam threw the ball. Michael Davis, I think, caught it. And lo and behold, I said, Touchdown, Hornets! <laughs> Touchdown. Touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Felix Jones. Of course, Felix Jones went on to play for the Dallas Cowboy University of Arkansas. John Winesbury, a lot of people don't remember him, 1970. Michael Harris, Tyler Lockett down in the NFL with the Seattle Seahawks. Oliver Ziegler, Ronaldo Works, R.W. McWhorters, Robert Meacham, Patrick Collins, Ruben Gant. Justice Hill, now playing for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Ryan Humphrey, Reggie and Tony Brooks, who went to the uh, University of Notre Dame. Great, great, great athletes, great individuals, all of whom I have an opportunity to meet and call their names from the press box at S.E. Williams Stadium. So grateful, so thankful for having an opportunity to do that. You know, I learned a long time ago that happiness is when you realize your children have turned out to be good people. Amen. My two kids, Ronald Lane, Ronald Jefferson, Ronald Jefferson now, tongue twisted, and Blair Lane has turned out to be two great kids. I raised both my kids by myself as a single parent. Both my kids are college graduates. My daughter graduated from the University of Arkansas. She calls all big suey. <laughs> my son graduated from Southern Illinois University with a degree in exercise science. My daughter graduated from the University of Arkansas with a degree in apparel studies. That says a lot. A single black male raising two kids who turned out to be somebody. That's a big, big, big something. Like that. Thank you guys. There you go. I know that uh, when you do a lot of football games, you have a lot of you have a lot of opportunities to create a lot of momentum in the crowd. I like doing it. When I get behind that mic, I get pumped up. And there's nothing like jacking the crowd up. Just by me saying something like, the ball is comfortably resting on the 50 yard line. Now, who ever thought of a football resting comfortably? But I see it resting comfortably. <laughs> or a plethora of flags decorating the field. That was a new word, a vocabulary word. I'm trying to always educate people. Yes, it's clever. Or a swarm of hornets. A swarm of hornets on the tackle. And of course, my favorite. 